Today I'm here at Congregational Lutheran United Church in Gardner, North Dakota. We're wrapping up the month of May. And this year it's also wrapping up the season of Easter. Ten days ago, on May 21st, we recognized the day of Ascension. Ascension happens 40 days after the resurrection. Ascension's the time when Jesus is there with his disciples and is taken up into heaven and promises the disciples that they need to stay in Jerusalem until the gift of the Holy Spirit is given to them. 40 days. Little bit of connection there with numerology throughout the scriptures. The Hebrew people were in the wilderness 40 years. When Noah was on the ark, it rained how long? 40 days and 40 nights after Jesus was baptized and he went into the wilderness and ultimately tempted by the devil, he was there 40 days. So there's a lot of connections with numbers. So instead of necessarily getting hard and fast on the number of days or the weeks, we just play around a bit at times in Christianity with numbers. Well, on Pentecost today, Pente meaning five, 50 days after the resurrection, that promised gift of the Holy Spirit is given to the disciples. And the account of that comes from the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout people from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in their own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each one of us in our own native language? And all were amazed and perplexed. And they said to one another, What does this mean? And others were mocking, saying, Ah, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, saying, All who dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. Quite the story. And if you think about all the changes that the disciples were going through from the resurrection, if we use this language, 50 days prior, 10 days prior to this was the ascension and their life changed again because Jesus was gone, lifted up into heaven from their sights. There's a lot of changes going on and a lot of connections being made. So for a few moments today, I want you to think about some connections. I'm not saying they're scientific. I just want you to think about the connections between our current pandemic with COVID-19 and the Holy Spirit. The reading says it appeared as if they were divided tongues of fire, but who saw that? Yeah, probably the other disciples. But for the most part, the coronavirus and the Holy Spirit are invisible. And yet the effects of each are significant. Look at what it has done for us and to us since the beginning of March in this country when we had 
the beginnings of the lockdown or stay at home orders. And now we're trying to get back, so to speak, into more routines. For the disciples, it was 50 days. For us, it's been a lot more, but it certainly has affected us. And for many of us now, things have changed to the point of we're wearing masks when we're out in public or in surroundings where there are more people. I'm not wearing mine today because there's nobody else here in the congregation. And yet we have divisions too in our culture, in our country that are saying, no, nah, that's stupid to wear masks, it's all a hoax, we don't need to do that. And that's their right to say it. It's kind of like all these people in Jerusalem going, ah, what's wrong with these disciples? Are they drunk already? We hear them in our own language, but ah, come on. What's going on here? And what little I know about learning foreign languages in high school, the only foreign language offered, and if you were going to go to college, you needed to have a foreign language, at least a couple years and the days that I was in high school, all that was offered was French. And I learned to say, bonjour, or como allez vous Okay, I know a couple phrases, but to really know another language, you almost have to know the culture. You have to get immersed into what's going on. So, what happened with these disciples? Did they just learn a language for the day to talk to these people in Jerusalem? And then after the day was done, they went back and forgot it? Or did they understand more about the people they were talking to and their cultures and their understandings so that indeed they could enter into a new space with them? The, did the disciples once if you want to say they quit this Pentecost event and speaking in these different tongues, or they go back to their normal routine? What's going to happen to us? Do we somehow go back to the way it was pre-pandemic? Or have things changed? I know for myself and many others, there's kind of this back and forth and back and forth and which one is it going to be? Or do we now begin to understand our current world and our current culture in different ways? And at times for me as well, it's frustrating because it was easy to go back or I'd like to go back and just do things the way they used to be. I told somebody once, it's kind of like learning to ride a bike again and you've still got training wheels on it because everything has changed. And the virus and the Holy Spirit affect people in different ways. We think we know the pattern of COVID-19 and yet there's still surprises. We think, and churches at times or denominations try to say, this is the way the Holy Spirit's going to act. Who are we to say how it's going to act? Because it surprises us. Some people, if you want to say, get on fire with their faith and go out and do great things. And others, it's just a part of their daily routine and yet, it causes them to look at life differently. If you put it in the, if you want to say the, the COVID-19, you may be asymptomatic and not show any of those signs of being ill. And yet, you can, back to the COVID, you can be giving it to other people. As Christians living our lives in kindness and grace and generosity and acceptance, not trying to necessarily give the Holy Spirit to somebody else? Are we actually giving it to the world in some pretty calm and quiet ways? I don't know. 
That's why I'm just tossing it out there to let you think about what are the connections and what do those connections mean to you? Because I certainly spend time thinking about what they mean to me and I haven't sorted that out yet. But to wrap things up, there is a significant difference between COVID-19 and the gift of God's Spirit. The work of the virus is to take away life. The work of God's Spirit is to enhance life. A great distinguishing difference. In the midst of COVID-19, I know that God's Spirit is working in many ways. I can't control it and I don't want to. But in the midst of everyday life, God is working to enhance life. Maybe in big, bold ways, maybe in quiet ways. Thanks for watching.